In this video, we're going to look at an investment trust dividend portfolio with the aim of just living off the dividends in retirement, setting and forgetting the portfolio, and just counting the cash as it comes rolling in. So one of the best ways to do that is through investing in dividend heroes. This is a term coined by the Association of Investment Companies and its investment trusts with a track record of growing their dividends for over 20 years. However, some of the dividend heroes have a low yield and some of the dividends do not grow in line with inflation. So we're going to look at it in a bit more detail. Investment trusts can build up a revenue reserve by holding back 15% of the dividends they receive from the companies they invest in. And over time, this can amount to a substantial sum. Investment trusts can also pay dividends from their capital reserves, which are the profits they make from buying and selling investments. However, exchange traded funds and open-ended investment companies pass on all the dividends they receive and they don't have these capital or revenue reserves. So here's an ETF, IUKD. It invests in the 50 highest yielding companies in the 50 FTSE 350. However, it's based on historic yield which is a lagging indicator. It did not perform very well in the global financial crisis as it held too many banks and it also held Carillion as it went bankrupt. But the dividend heroes, they give you confidence that the income objective of the investment trust will be translated into a healthy and growing payout and they should be able to withstand short term shocks such as COVID. They might not withstand a prolonged recession, but they should be more resilient than most. So here's a list of the dividend heroes. Uh, you can find it online. I've got the web address at the top there and you've got the years of consecutive dividend growth here with City of London Trust number one at 56 years. You might want to pause the video just to have a look at all the funds. Then also we've got the next generation of dividend heroes. These are ones that have between 10 and 19 years of consecutive dividend growth different sectors here. And again, you might want to pause the video to have a look at these in full. So I've put together a portfolio based on these lists and the criteria are the dividend yield, growth of the dividend, how many years it's been growing for, the fees it has, the size and the liquidity of the fund, how easy it is to trade, how it manages the price to net asset value cycle, total returns over five years, whether it's using excessive gearing and correlation and fit with the rest of the portfolio that I have. And the objectives are to live off income. Capital growth is a bonus, not a necessity. Should be no need to look at prices, no need to buy and sell funds to keep up with the objectives. Suggested yield is 4%, but if uh, the yield is too high, then it's potentially unsustainable. So uh, I'm a bit wary of very high yielding assets. So some types of assets that I could invest in would be UK shares, global shares, sometimes regional, property and infrastructure, possibly corporate debt and other things such as song royalties or solar energy. Although actually I won't be choosing those because I find they lack transparency and there's possibility of all sorts of risks that you haven't really considered. So what I did is I went to the AIC.co.uk, I selected research tools and then compare investment companies I then select a sector and it pulls up the data here. I can then filter on things like dividend yield, five year dividend growth. I've got some summary stats here that I can use to start drilling through which ones catch my eye. Then I can go into more detail, just click on one. This is merchants. I've got all these tabs here that show me all kinds of information. Also got the company website. Um, so again, I can just drill through all this to capture all the data that I need. And then that's how I put together the portfolio. So the choices were for UK equity income, merchants trust, City of London and equity income. I feel like Norman Collier with his broken microphone whenever I say that company's name. Now you might think, oh, I can do this myself. But the problem is private investors tend to sell at a low price after a profit warning or a dividend cut. And they also tend to buy 
at a high price after a favourable press write-up. Never underestimate the emotions of trading. Be like Spock. If you can't be like Spock, pay someone else who can do an impersonation of Spock. Another inclusion is Linsel Train. In the past, I've called this Linsel Train Wreck, uh, but the poor performance of the fund has caused the dividend yield to pop onto our radar. And there's a cash generative business, the fund management alongside an investment portfolio. So I can collect the dividend and hope that the performance improves. I'm also selecting JP Morgan Global Growth and Income. Uh, it's not yet a dividend hero. Uh, this aims to pay a 4% yield based on both receiving dividends and trading assets to make a profit. We've got the top 10 holdings here. Pretty good companies, but not necessarily my choice. Uh, things like Procter & Gamble and Johnson & Johnson aren't there, and they are phenomenal dividend companies. Um, but the share price performance is better than most in this selection. Other funds I included, the Infrastructure Fund, International Public Partnerships, Private Equity from Columbia Threadneedle, Henson Far East Income, Murray International's Global Fund, and CQS New City High Yield, which invests in corporate debt. I've benchmarked against CT Global Managed Portfolio, ticker CMPI. This is an investment trust that invests in high yield investment trusts. So it's a fund of funds. I looked at its holdings, what it holds, and also what it doesn't hold. Uh, unfortunately, though, this pays fees on top of the fees that you're already charged from the underlying companies. Uh, it's also quite a small investment trust. It's not particularly liquid. We've got the top 10 here. Some of them are pretty good. Uh, Lord Adventure is very interesting. Um, but this is a graph for Princess Private Equity, and it's just kind of gone off a cliff and really not performed very well. So even the professionals can get it wrong. So what I've done is built a Google Sheet that runs correlations on the portfolio. So when I'm putting together the portfolio, I'm looking for any potential overlaps. Um, this isn't too bad. I sell the file on eBay. I'll put a link in the description. So run the correlations. Then I run the returns over maximum drawdown in the same file. So we've got duration of the drawdown, maximum drawdown, volatility, annualized returns, so we get sharp ratio, returns over maximum drawdown as well. Some of these are unfortunately negative, so they're kind of yield traps, and before the payments of any dividends, they're losing you money, but there's one or two that uh, are fairly good. Um, and then so we've got the overall portfolio when it blends together, sharp ratio 0.17. And we do have positive annualized returns before we've taken the dividends into account. So now I've benchmarked it again using the same file against CP CMPI. So portfolio yield slightly higher, uh, better sharp ratio and better return on maximum drawdown. Um, but then the actual outperformance is just this little bit here, although it was less volatile around here. So then what I looked at was uh, Interactive Investor. It's a great website. They have lots of interesting articles. They put together an income portfolio every year of investment trusts with the aim of 4% yield overall. Uh, so some of the actual components have quite low yields, but they have maybe more robust price performance. So those are the holdings there. Uh, so I ran that through the same model um, and here we've got all positive sharp ratios which is good overall sharp ratios risen so again this beats cmpi um, although the yield is lower and um, we've got better better performance stats um, but still hmm, i mean it's only just breaking even over um, it's about a three-year period so in conclusion I would say that I prefer high yield investment trusts to value investment trusts as true value needs to pay cash to its shareholders. The portfolio performance I felt was a bit disappointing, but some of the trusts I've selected might show a recovery in capital growth, such as Linsel Train. And I've kind of tried to buy things when they've been a bit beaten up.
And it can take time to really get to know an investment trust and have full confidence in it. So build the portfolio in advance of when you might need it. And then that can really help to get a watching brief over what's going on. And consider putting in some lower yielding trusts with low price volatility to balance out the portfolio a bit more. But avoid overfitting past data to try and optimize everything as past performance might not be repeated.